on this Advent Sunday. I hope that you are in good heart and are looking forward to the end of this second lockdown. It's only a few days away and parts of our lives will be possible again, with restrictions, of course. The church here is ready for Advent. The old serum blue frontals are out for the season and we have our Advent wreath here um, waiting to be lit. Waiting is at the heart of Advent, waiting for the celebration of Christmas and the arrival of the Christ child, Emmanuel, God with us, light entering our dark world. But Advent is also waiting for the coming in glory of Jesus Christ as King of the universe and as judge. A double waiting, if you like. And of course, this year, we've all had to practice waiting in spades. We've experienced it like no other year, waiting for information on what we can and cannot do sometimes given with very little notice. And most recently, we've been waiting for information on what is, hap what is to happen over December and Christmas. Well, as of a few days ago, some of this is now clear-ish. At the end of this service, I will briefly update you on what is going to happen in the parish as we emerge from lockdown. Well, it, as I said earlier, it is the beginning of Advent and starting today and throughout Advent, we will be having daily re reflections led by some of our parishioners. Uh, and these reflections are based on Tom Wright's book, Advent for Everyone, A Journey Through Luke. So at 7.30 in the morning each day, a reflection will be posted on the parish Facebook page. And I really hope that these personal reflections will be a source of inspiration, comfort and encouragement at this time. As always uh, in this service, please don't hesitate to message in any prayer requests that you may have and we will include them in our prayers later in the service. Well, I man mentioned our Advent wreath earlier, so let's turn to that and the lighting of our first Advent candle. We light this candle for all God's people, struggling to be bearers of hope in a troubled world. God, as we wait for your promise, give light, give hope. Well, before our first hymn, let us pray. Heavenly Father, this Advent Sunday, as we start a new church year watching and waiting, give us patience and open our eyes to see your hand at work around us. In this season, help us to reflect on the coming of Jesus, who brings light to the world. Help us to leave behind the darkness of sin and walk in your light, assured of your Holy Spirit's presence with us. With your light, may we be filled afresh with your love and your hope. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, we're now going to listen or sing along at home with that great great Advent hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
a great way to start our service. Um, o Come, O Come, Emmanuel is one of my favorite Advent carols. Um, just amazing words and uh, well worth reflecting on if you've got an opportunity uh, as uh, the week unfurls. Well, we've now come to the point in our, com- our service for confession. One of the great things about being a Christian is that we don't have to walk around with the burden of, 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 of sin, of wrongdoing, of things that we wished we'd done differently. We can confess to our loving Heavenly Father who freely forgives us. When the Lord comes, he will bring light to the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. For the times when we have failed to care for God's creation. Lord, have mercy. For the times when we have failed to keep God's commandment to love our neighbours as ourselves. Christ, have mercy. For the times when we have failed to love God. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to everlasting life. Amen. And the collect for today, Advent Sunday. Almighty God, as your kingdom dawns, turn us from the darkness of sin to the light of holiness, that we may be ready to meet you in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, we're now going to hear our scripture reading for this service. So if you have your Bible to hand or perhaps a Bible app on your tablet or phone, you might like to follow our reading today. It's taken from St. Mark's Gospel, Mark chapter 13, verses uh, 24 to 37. And Judith will read it to us now. Good morning, everyone. This is Mark 13, starting at verse 24. The coming of the Son of Man. But in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things, sorry, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware and keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. Thank you. Let 
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your precious word, a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Amen. Advent is upon us again, a wonderful season. As I said earlier, Advent is a season of waiting, but it's also a season of self-examination and penance of getting right with God. A mini Lent, if you like. A time of great anticipation as we await the joy of celebrating again the birth of Jesus Christ, the Saviour of the world. And also look forward to the return of Christ as King in all his glory as judge. One thing, as I said earlier, we've been doing a lot this year is waiting. Waiting for lockdowns to lift. Waiting for restrictions to change. Waiting for a vaccine. Waiting and praying for ill friends, family and acquaintances. Waiting to, be see, to see what tier we will be in after this second lockdown. Waiting to see who we might spend Christmas with. As I've said, we've been waiting a lot this year. One small comfort is that the normal brash and noisy commercial Christmas machine that often crushes the Advent season has been a lot quieter this year. There is a far more sober and serious f feeling to life than normal at the moment. Perhaps this is due to lockdown. Perhaps it's also due to the parlour state of the economy. You will have heard the very recent news that the Arcadia Group is facing collapse and that 13,000 jobs currently are on the line. We will be praying for workers and businesses later in our service. The world is rapidly changing. Shopping, which used to be a major pastime for many, is not going to return to being the experience it once was. Well, with the restrictions that we still face, it might be easier for us all this year to keep an Advent, to stop Advent becoming Christmas too quickly, to use this season wisely, perhaps putting aside some time each day to do something different that helps us in our personal self-examination. Time to consider our spiritual life. To help do that, you might like to follow the short daily reflections that I mentioned uh, in the introduction to our service that will be posted at 7.30 in the morning on our parish Facebook page. You could also consider reading one of the many Christian books written for this season, and there's some great ones out there. Or perhaps you could follow Advent material from a Christian organisation, such as Tear Fund, who in 2020 are offering an Advent calendar, which is a thought each day over this season. Advent is a great season full of symbols and um, a time um, of drama too, a time of both penance and joy, a season in which we remember the patriarchs, the prophets, yearning for the coming of the Messiah. We remember John the Baptist, Jesus' herald, making straight the paths, and of course, Mary, the mother of God, Theotokos, bearer of God. And of course, this Advent has another great thread running through it, that of Jesus' return again, not as a baby, but as judge of all the world, coming in power and glory. It can be a sobering, even terrifying thought that Christ's return will be in glory to judge. 
And we need to be vigilant, aware of this future reality. Earlier in chapter 13 of Mark's Gospel, just before the reading that Judith read to us today, Jesus' disciples had been admiring the temple, gazing in awe at its huge size and its beauty. Jesus had responded with the shocking prophecy that this great building, one of the architectural wonders of the world, would be utterly destroyed. Something had ultimately happened in AD 70, when the temple uh, was razed to the ground by uh, the Romans, who were quelling Jewish rebellion. It was simply unthinkable to Jesus' disciples that this glorious building could ever be destroyed. Perhaps uh, an equivalent is um, it being unthinkable to us that uh, Westminster Abbey or St. Paul's uh, Cathedral could ever be destroyed. And prophesying from the destruction of the temple, Jesus moves on to the end of history itself as we heard in that reading that Judith read to us earlier. Three times, Jesus, Jesus implores his listeners to keep awake or keep watch. He doesn't suggest any particular kind of activity or busyness. Just as the theologian Jane Williams puts it, watchful preparedness watchful preparedness. The Lord will return at a time unknown. So keep awake, keep watch, be vigilant. It's learning to keep awake or keep watch that we are to do. And it's a skill. We need to read the signs of our times Realising that despite the chaos and perplexity of the world, God ultimately wins. We're living through this extended time of pandemic. Who would have thought back in March that it would last so long? The pandemic has also accelerated change all around us in all areas of our lives. And though we face major uncertainties, as a country. So for example, after vaccination, when will all the restrictions be lifted? We've got Brexit looming, and of course, climate change. We must never forget that God is there with us in it all, and he has promised never to leave us. We're not promised deliverance from all difficult and hard situations in our lives. But we are promised God's presence, his abiding, loving presence, his peace to claim in all that we face. Jesus Christ encourages us to remain at peace with him, particularly when we feel powerless in the midst of all the uncertainties and upheavals that we face. God is in control. We are to see such things as signs, inspiring us to live even more attentively to the teachings of Jesus, to follow him more nearly, And, in our, and live our lives sharing the blessings we have with others. And we do this knowing that Jesus will return, as Mark tells us, with great power and glory. So, as this Advent unfurls, let us take time to wait, to examine our lives, Repenting of all that, it, the, all that holds us back in our faith. And as we prepare to celebrate again the birth of Jesus, remain awake, 
watching and ready for his return in glory. Let us pray. Almighty God, as your kingdom dawns, turn us from the darkness of sin to the light of holiness, that we may be ready to meet you in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, we're now going to listen to our second hymn this morning. Make way, make way. Well, we've now come in our service to our prayer time. So to the words, Lord, as we wait your as we await your coming, please respond with hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as we begin a new year in the life of the church, we remember the promise of your presence with us, no matter what. We ask for your kingdom to come in us. Increase our faith and love for you so we may be brighter lights in the darkness. Lord, as we await your coming, hear our prayer. Father, we continue to pray for patience and resilience as this second lockdown finishes next week. We pray that the easing on meeting together as households allowable over the Christmas period will not result in a third spike and another lockdown. We pray for all making decisions over the Christmas period about meeting up. May everyone respect each other's decisions and may choices not become a source of family argument, resentment and division. Lord, as we await your coming, hear our prayer. 
we continue to pray for our government and for those assessing the vaccine data at this time. We pray for those teams planning the mass vaccination programme that will be required, that all will be quickly in place to enable inoculation to start. In the excitement of the emergence of good vaccines, we also pray the pledges made to developing countries over vaccine delivery will also be honoured. We continue to pray for all the work in the NHS that the additional burden of COVID-19 will not overwhelm the NHS, particularly in this winter period with all the other pressures that the NHS faces. We pray for staff at this time that they will have the stamina uh, and the rest and space they need away from a very, very busy time at work. Lord, as we await your coming, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for those local and national businesses that we know and for business owners struggling at this time. May they receive the support they need to stay viable. We pray for those who are facing huge uncertainty at this time over their work. For those who are facing possible redundancy and for those who have already lost their jobs. May all get the support they need and for those who are searching for jobs, may they get the advice and encouragement they need at this time. Lord, as we await your coming, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as the UK government's Brexit trade talks continue, May we see a breakthrough and a deal emerge even at this extremely late hour. May those negotiating come to a common agreement and a way forward. We pray for those involved in Brexit planning and pray that confusion will come, will become clarity as the 1st of January approaches. We pray for all those who are making um, decisions at this time um, over um, how importing and exporting in their companies will work. And we pray that the current confusion will dissipate and that it will be clear to people what they need to do to get goods out of the UK and to get goods into this country. Lord, as we await your coming, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we continue to pray for the United States uh, in this period of transition as Pre President-elect Biden and his team starts preparations for assuming office. We pray that all politicians across the United States will work together for the good of the whole country and for peace and reconciliation. Lord, as we await your coming, hear our prayer. Lord, you are a God of healing and today we particularly pray for those who have asked for healing prayer, praying for Jen and family, 
Tim, Jeffrey, Bob, Lorna, Sandra, John, Charles, David, Davida, Patrick, Ben and e Ben, Erica and Tudor, Eddie, Ron, Drew, Trevor, Paula, Keith, Jill, David, Richard, Paul, Ian, Jeff, Dr. Daniel, Jean, Carol, Sharon, Michael, Jane, Annabelle, Jim, Sam, Gwyneth, Elizabeth, Jerry, Colin, and Marlene and family. And in a few moments of silence, we remember others for whom we are praying for too. Lord, as we await your coming, hear our prayer. Lord, you are God of comfort, and today we remember those who are mourning at this time, particularly praying for the family and friends of Derek Tapson and Wynne Greest. May they know the comfort of your love with them and your peace surrounding them at this time. Lord, as we await your coming, hear our prayer. As we finish our time of prayer together this morning, let's say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, as our service begins to draw to a close, um, I just want to um, share some notices. Um, our notices can be found on the e-news or in the uh, paper um, news sheets that have been delivered out recently. And I just want to highlight um, a few notices this morning. Our services continue today at 4 p.m. with our informal service where we continue our exploration of prayer. Penny will uh, be continuing uh, this uh, series uh, looking at uh, contemplation, and the service will be found here on our Facebook page at 4 p.m. At the moment, both of our churches continue for this week to be open for personal prayer. So St Boniface will continue to be open on Tuesdays between 10am and 11 and St Martin's will be open on Wednesdays from 10am to 11 too. All are welcome to come along for personal prayer. Our archbishops are encouraging us uh, to use this time of lockdown to pray for our nation and we are uh, continuing that and are especially in, encouraged to join in prayer at 6 p.m. every evening for our country. Well, next Sunday we will be out of lockdown. Um, so next Sunday, the 6th of December, we're able to gather again and we'll have a congregation here at the 10 a.m. service and at 4 p.m. Uh, here in St Boniface. On Wednesdays, uh, um, the uh, 9th of December, our Wednesday communion service 
at uh, St. Martin's will recommence. Now things are clarifying, we will be announcing details of our services in December later this week. Please look out for these in our e-news and uh, in our news sheets. We've sadly, due to restrictions, uh, um, going to need to uh, ticket um, some of our Christmas services, particularly our Christmas Eve and Christmas Day services. And details about uh, how to go about getting tickets um, will also be um, um, available soon, should you wish to, to join us. Um, I just want to um, confirm that on Christmas Day we will be having um, a Christmas communion from uh, here in St Boniface and that will be live streamed too. Um, so we, we will continue to um, live stream um, services uh, as, as I've said before uh, indefinitely. So if you can't join us, you will still be able to, if you can't join us physically, you will still be able to join us as we um, celebrate uh, uh, Christmas Day together. Help is still needed uh, by Eastleigh Basics Bank, um, who are uh, in Operation Hamper at the moment. They're wanting to give out hampers to everybody who has used the service over the last year. So that's between five and 600 hampers. They're still short of some drivers. So if you think you might be able to, 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 to be involved in that, um, please do uh, contact Eastleigh Basics Bank. And uh, details on how to, how to do that uh, um, are in our e-news. Many of you will be aware that the parish has registered with Easy Fundraising, uh, an organisation that it enables you to donate to a charity when you purchase online from over 4,000 retail sites. Um, I've just registered and it's really easy to do, so can I encourage you um, to give it a go? Uh, I'm now good to go, so when I shop online, um, the organisations that I shop with will give um, um, a small uh, donation to um, the parish of Chandler's Ford uh, as I shop. We're also now registered with uh, Amazon Smile too. So if you buy on the internet, please do register because every little bit helps uh, in these uh, times. And finally, uh, next week, uh, Penny, our ordinand, will be leading our 10 a.m. worship, uh, and I'll be preaching uh, at, uh, at this service. And so we finish our service today with the blessing. May Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you, scatter the darkness from before your path, and make you ready to meet him when he comes. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you and those whom you love, now and forevermore. Amen. And from the six of us uh, gathered here in St Boniface May, um, I wish you um, a very happy uh, week ahead and uh, um, may uh, it be um, a week of blessing um, for you. And we look forward to seeing you um, next Sunday at 10am as we gather together for worship again. So it's goodbye from me.